This is a story about the early days of the First Presbyterian Church of Columbia, the Church of the 49ers, as compiled by the Church's History Committee. This is the way it looked just a few years ago. Notice the entrance of the church. But Columbia didn't always look this way in the early 1850s. In the beginning, the Argonauts came to Columbia by the thousands to find a golden treasure. They built shanties, bars, brothels. They lived in tents for the most part, seeking places for personal privacy and shelter, places to eat and sleep. Nestled between the hills, they soon began to live more orderly lives while they continued their search for gold. Many professed Christian faiths. Some were Presbyterians. One of these was the Reverend J. H. Broke, whose uh, record remains. In 1854, he called his fellow Presbyterians to meet to authorize the building of a church. And so it was that a group met in what is now the town of Columbia in that year, on September the 9th. Mr. E. Mills moved to provide support for such an undertaking. Trustees were elected and work began. An early photo dated 1865 shows that they built fences to divide their properties and shingled their frame shelters to make them more permanent. A crenellated tower in the middle distance showed the location of what became First Presbyterian Church. It was here that uh, Reverend Henry Palmer delivered his eulogy for President Lincoln after the assassination. It was also in this same place that Reverend Jerry Vanover repeated the eulogy. 148 years later, on February 15, 2004. The congregation dwindled when the surface gold ran out. There are not many records for quite a period, except those remaining in the session's minutes. Copies are on file in the Histories Committee's vault downstairs. There was snow during the winter of 1947. Reverend Hillhouse recorded this view on the day that he arrived, February 8, 1948 and on the next day. The next photograph shows it nestled amid the snow-covered trees. A picket fence shows the boundary of the church property on Jackson Street. Reverend Hillhouse occupied the pastor's house, which had been built on the north of the uh, church's structure. The crenellations are gone from the church's tower in the next view, but the picture shows the arbor on the walk leading to the pastor's home. Simple steps allowed parishioners to enter the church. Reverend Perno called it St. Andrew's. Trees surrounded the one-story cottage next door. The fence had disappeared by this time, but some of the trees may remain to this day. By 1949, the number of parishioners was sufficient to provide a number of people in period dress to serve as extras in a film called Cross Tides. It was a melodrama based on earlier times. Later that year, the members of the congregation decided it was time to refurbish the church. Work progressed. Notice the open trust work above the choir loft and the electric lights. Also notice the number of ladies that helped with the work. Then there was a fire during the nighttime hours of June 22, 1950. Probable cause was spontaneous combustion, a result of restoration efforts in place at the time. All was lost except some of the fire crews, which were outside the building and half of the bell which survived in the ashes. Only the front part of the pastor's cottage remained. Hands in pockets, one man watched the other as he cooled the carnage. Square nails salvaged from the remains were used to 
help finance reconstruction efforts. A new building on the site was proposed, a replica of the original. In 1951, California State Governor Earl Warren was shown a model of the proposed structure. Young ladies of the congregation presented to him in his sacramental office. Note that the original crenellations were included in the tower structure. A special issue of commemorative postage stamps was created and issued at the Columbia Post Office. One of the same ladies presented Governor Warren with a sheet of these stamps. Work progressed through 1953, with services being held in the old Vermont Hall while construction was in progress. The main structure was finished in 1954. The simple entrance at the northeast corner was retained. It was possible to hold a presbytery meeting in the new structure in 1954. The balcony was empty. Miners' style electric lights had been installed on the side walls. Reverend Hillhouse was able to preach a restoration dedication service on April 30th of 1954 standing at a simple pulpit between empty choir loft positions. Rose Jones is shown pedaling the organ. A stained glass window on the wall back of the pulpit. These last slides show some of the church's historical detail as illustrated on a signboard which was placed there in December 1954 as part of the 100th anniversary celebration for the organization of the church. The last two slides show Jesus in a box, produced by Vern Butterfield, as it appeared in front of the church, and Paul Bennett's welded cross in a circle, which was placed beside the stairway of the Christian Education Building after that building was completed. The church may still have stormy times in Columbia, but be assured that there are great days ahead for God's people.